Reghistan and Samarkand, Uzbekistan. The Reghistan was the heart of the ancient city of Samarkand of the Demurid dynasty, now in Uzbekistan. The name Rajistan means sandy place or desert in Persian. The Reghistan was a public square, where people gathered to hear royal proclamations, heralded by blasts on enormous copper pipes called Jarkas, and a place of public executions. It is framed by three madrasas of distinctive Islamic architecture. Located in the center of Samarkand, the Reghistan Square with its medieval edifices is certainly one of the most impressive squares in the world. The legend has it that the square was a place of public executions from the 15th to the early 20th centuries, and they strew it with sand to absorb the blood shed there. Therefore, the square was named Reghistan, Reg, Sand, and Stan, Place, a sand place. It was also a place where people, summoned with trumpets, gathered to listen to government decrees announced. Initially, at the beginning of the 15th century, the square did not have the grand madrasas standing on its three sides today. They were built later, in the 15th and the 17th centuries. The Reghistan Square, paved with fired bricks and cobbles, and the architectural ensemble of its three edifices, masterpieces of medieval Islamic architecture, have been UNESCO World Heritage Sites since 2001. The central building of the ensemble is Tilakori Madrasa, Ulugbek Madrasa and Sherdor Madrasa stand to the left and right of it respectively. The madrasas date from different times. Ulugbek Madrasa, the earliest of them, was built in 1417-1420 by order of Ulugbek, Tamerlane's grandson. Two centuries later, by order of Samarkand Governor Yalant Tush Bahadur Sherdor Madrasa and Tilakori Madrasa were built. They replaced the Kanaka and the Caravanserai that had been built under Ulugbek. Each of the madrasas features unique decorations, fascinating tile mosaics, delicate stone carvings, splendid gilt ceilings, etc. There was a period when Reghistan Square madrasas stayed in a state of disrepair and were empty. In the 17th to 18th centuries, Samarkand was in crisis, the Khanate's capital had been moved to Bokhara, and the Silk Road highway passing through the city had ceased to function. At the end of the 18th century Samarkand came back to normal life again, with a lot of shops and other small facilities opened in the square. In 1875, the square was leveled and paved, and became the major city center again. Today various festivals, holidays, and shows are held in the square. The madrasas have been fully restored by now and are open for visitors. There is a number of shops offering local handicrafts housed in them. Ulugbek Madrasa Ulugbek Madrasa was built by order of Ulugbek, Tamerlane's grandson in 1417 to 1420. Called a scientist on the throne, Ulugbek was a prominent astronomer of his times and an ardent promoter of education, science, and art in his kingdom. The madrasa had turned out probably the most beautiful building he had ever ordered to erect. The facade of the structure facing the Reghistan Square features a magnificent 34.7-meter high Pishtik portal of the main Iwan entrance. The portal is covered with intricate geometric and star-shaped mosaic designs, as well as bands of calligraphic inscriptions, all made of glazed tiles in prevalent shades of blue. The either end of the facade has a minaret covered with geometric designs all over it too. There were minarets at every corner of the buildings but only these two and part of the northwestern rear one survive. The front minarets, affected by the elements, had been leaning quite badly until they were fixed in 1922 and 1965. The building is rectangular, there is also a smaller Iwan entrance on each of the three other sides. Decorated with tile mosaics, the Iwan opposite the main portal is the entrance to the domed mosque the madrasa incorporates. There were also lecture halls and two stories of 48 Hajera dormitory cells along the square courtyard of the madrasa. 
During the 18th century riots the second story and the four large domes of the lecture halls in the corners of the courtyard were removed, the local ruler was afraid that the insurgents might shoot at his palace from them. In the 1990s the second story, except for the domes, was restored. Though missing the domes, the building is a perfect example of Islamic elite architecture of the early Jamurid times. The architect of it remains unknown though. According to some historical sources, Ulugbek himself took part in designing it. The madrasa was one of the world's best Islamic colleges in the 15th century. The famous scholar and poet Jamie was one of its graduates, for instance. It was also a center of secular education and research during Ulugbek's reign. Among his lecturers were Ulugbek himself and Qadi Zada al-Rumi, the father of Samarkand scientists and Plato of his times, as he was called by his contemporaries. Ulugbek, much more successful as an astronomer than a king, whose world-famous star catalogue was the best between Ptolemies and Bras, was killed by order of his son Abdul Adif on October 25, 1449. His body was left on the doorstep of his modest home inside the madrasa. Sherdor Madrasa Sherdor Madrasa, which translates as possessing lions, was named after the mosaic motif on the upper part of its Pishtik portal. Reflecting each other on the right and left parts of the tympanum, it is a tiger-looking beast with a mane, some sort of a tiglan, pursuing some sort of a white fallow deer and a segment of the personified sun over the Tiglan's back, either watching the hunting scene or just rising out. This mosaic motif is unique to medieval Islamic historic buildings, since depicting animals and people is against Sharia. However, the designers of the madrasas seem to have tried to find a compromise, the creatures are fantastical, and the human face of the sun has both male and female features. Why Yalant Tush Bahadur decided to use this motif, provoking Muslim clergy, is only a supposition. Some scholars say he wanted to highlight it because it was a popular Samarkand symbol of power, a Persian symbol Samarkand had borrowed. By the way, today's Samarkand seal features a snow leopard, another member of the large cat's family. Whatever the reason was, the mosaic turned out to be a unique Central Asian piece of art and one of Uzbekistan's identity emblems. Sherdor's Tiglan and the Sun is even printed on the country's 200 Som banknote. Sherdor Madrasa was built on the site of the dilapidated Kanaka right across from Ulugbek Madrasa in 1619-1635. Its portal was supposed to be a reflection of Ulugbek Madrasa portal, but they managed to achieve it only to a certain extent. The architect had not allowed for the two-meter elevation difference between the madrasas, so they had to shorten the structure to be level with Ulugbek Madrasa. Sherdor Madrasa still features two impressive ribbed domes flanking its portal. The structure is a rectangle and plan too, though shorter, for there is not a mosque at its end. In contrast with Ulugbek Madrasa, Sherdor Hudjara cells are of one room only, the eastern façade features wall-high three-quarter towers, not minarets. The side Iwan niches facing the yard have multifaceted semi-spherical ceilings Ulugbek Madrasa has never had. Sherdor Madrasa is also richly decorated with glazed bricks and tiles, forming various mosaics and intricate Giric geometrical patterns designed to look discernible from a distance. The friezes of the minarets and the dome drums are covered with ornamental inscriptions in Arabic. The upper parts of the Hudjara cell arches, the interior of the lecture hall and many other surfaces of the madrasa feature very fine floral designs and arabesques, gilt and multicolored. Sherdor Madrasa has survived a few earthquakes, with considerable damages though. In the 1920s and 1960s it was restored completely. For almost three centuries the madrasa was quite a prominent Islamic college, although behind Ulugbek Madrasa in prestige. Despite its size, only around 40 students could study in it. Among its graduates was Shihobeddin Marjani, the famous Tatar theologian and a member of the Sufi order of Naqshbandi. 
Tilakori Madrasa. Yalant Tush Bahadur ordered to build Tilakori Madrasa on the site of Mirzo Caravansarai, also dilapidated, in 1646, ten years after Sherdor Madrasa had been finished. They completed Tilakori Madrasa in 1660, after the governor had already died. The madrasa had been designed to complete the architectural ensemble in the square, adorning its northern side. However, the architect did not plan to make it a replica of either of the other two madrasas. Though its main portal is similar to the ones of its mates, it is smaller, while the two-story wings, each with a short minaret at the end, are longer and have arched niches of 16 hujaira cells. The madrasa is square in plan, featuring a mosque with a portal and a large blue dome on the left of the main portal and behind it. They wanted the structure to serve as both a madrasa and a Friday communal prayer mosque. The mosque is a cross in plan, featuring a beautifully decorated mirab, a niche in the wall of a mosque that shows the direction of Mecca Muslims should face when praying, and an 11 stair marble minbar pulpit. The interior walls and cupola of the mosque boast rich gilt ornaments, hence the name of the madrasa translates as gilded. The Foriwan yard is surrounded with hujaira cells, the main facade wings have two stories of them, the other three sides have only one. The inside and outside yard facades are covered with brick and tile geometric, floral and inscriptional mosaic designs. At the beginning of the 19th century a strong earthquake destroyed the upper part of the main portal of the madrasa. It was restored during the reign of Amir Kaidar, except for the mosaic decoration though. The restoration work on the décor and exterior ornaments continued and was completed in the 20th century, in the 1920s, 1930s, 1950s and 1970s. Today Tilakori Madrasa houses the Reghistan Restoration Museum. Nearby Historic Buildings Located to the east of Tilakori Madrasa is the Mausoleum of the Shabanids, a dynasty that ruled the Khanate of Bukhara and Khorezm from the early 16th to the late 17th centuries. The mausoleum has a large number of tombstones, the oldest of which dates from the 16th century. Behind Sherdor Madrasa stands Korsu a trading dome, evidence that Reghistan was the center of trade in medieval Samarkand. This hexagonal domed structure was built in the 15th century and rebuilt in the early 18th century. The building was restored in 2005, they had to remove 3 meters of soil to open it all above the foundations. Now Korsu trading dome houses an art gallery where works of Uzbek artists and sculptors are exhibited. Like us and join us at Extreme Collections for more fun and knowledge.